With us today, Ken Notori of Notori Company. Um, you left Wall Street at a pivotal point. I think you were at Lehman Brothers in 2000, you left in 2007. April 2007. April 2007. <laughs> Can you tell, first of all, tell us a little bit about Notori Company. Uh, so the family, uh, it's a family run business that was started uh, 33 years ago. My parents actually both started out on Wall Street and my mother gave birth to me, not to reveal my age, but she gave birth <laughs> to me and thought, you know, started going back to Wall Street and decided that she wanted to do something a little more entrepreneurial. So she looked at, you know, she wasn't set on lingerie by any means. She looked at opening car washes, you know, McDonald's franchises. And one day, you know, she's from the Philippines and somebody sent her some, some peasant blouses. And so she called up a buyer at Saks, uh, excuse me, at Bloomingdale's and said, you know, we have these blouses, would you be interested? And the buyer said, you know, if you lengthen these, we could sell them as nightgowns. And so that was 33 years ago. She started the company from, uh, from her living room. Uh, with me in the bassinet in the uh, in the baby room right next to her, and uh, the rest is history. Great. So you went to undergrad at Amherst, then you went straight to Bloomberg. You worked there for what five years? Five years. Went to Stanford Business School. Correct. And then went straight to Lehman Brothers. Did your experience at Lehman Brothers prepare you for leaving and going to be the VP of Finance? I think you do the e-commerce. Yeah, I think you know all of those experiences as a whole helped prepare me. Um, <clears throat> You know, some people ask, why didn't you just join the company straight out of college? Why didn't you join the company straight after Bloomberg or straight after business school? And you know, at no point then did I feel really ready to contribute in a meaningful way to the company. I think having worked, you know, as a radio and TV reporter at Bloomberg, uh, you know, meeting tremendous people and learning a lot uh, at business school, and then having that experience at Lehman Brothers, um, all provided you know a lot of different experiences that I think helped sort of create a toolkit that helped me feel comfortable joining you know, a women's fashion business and feeling like I could, could contribute in a meaningful way. I have to ask, while you were at Lehman, was there any signs that this was going to go down the toilet in like you know, eight I, months? <laughs> I would love to say that I left because I was smart and saw it coming, but that would be, that would be a complete lie. You know, it was just the timing thing. I always knew at some point I would, I would leave to help join and, uh, and run the family business, and it just turned out to be April of 2007, so it was uh, you know, fortunate timing really more than anything else. Definitely, definitely. So you do the e-commerce um, uh, notory company. Tell me about the obstacles that you face there. Uh, you know, it's really everything. Um, we didn't launch our e-commerce, you know, because we're so dependent on department stores. We didn't want to launch our own direct consumer business until we felt they'd be comfortable with it. So right. we launched this in April of 2008. Previously, the website was just images. Um, and you know, we thought about farming it out to a company that could do everything for us, from design the website to fulfill, pick, pack, and ship, everything. And instead, we decided to do everything ourselves with, with different vendors. So it has been, you know, usually when you go online, you think it's pretty simple. You just click here, put in your credit card number, and buy. But every single step of the process. So fulfillment, distribution, yeah, everything, warehouse. And especially you know, taking returns back. It's, it's all very difficult, um, but it's very rewarding. You know? We all get emails every time we get an order, and especially this time of year, it's kind of fun checking your email every couple of minutes and seeing what's coming in. So there are challenges. There's so much more than can go wrong with every single step that I mm -hmm. thought was possible, but it is a very sort of instantly rewarding, rewarding operation. Did you model it after somebody that had been already out there, like an Amazon or a Zappos or um, not sort really? Of I mean, they have, you know, they have such more scale. I, we're a design-driven company, so the number one thing we wanted to do was have a website, Notori.com, that sort of was consistent with our, with our brand image, and we feel like we've done that. The rest of it, in terms of the fulfillment and in terms of the actual shopping experience, you know, once again, instead of modeling it around something that's focused on just generating sales, we wanted to do something that really created a good user experience, mm -hmm. and that to us is really more important than, um, more important than anything so else. So how did sales do Notori.com uh, for Cyber Monday? Uh, you know, because we don't discount as aggressively, you know, high-end sleepwear and high-end fashion, right. I, I, Cyber Monday is really more, it's not really a fashion high-end event. So our sales were great, but I think that's really more of sort of a discounted, it's different price points. Of course. And so sales so far overall uh, since, um, you know, the, since Thanksgiving have been fantastic, but Cyber Monday wasn't necessarily as big a, big. a spike up as you'd see in other, in other internet businesses. But overall, you know, we're trending very positive. We do see consumers responding to, you know, to full price merchandise, which is what, what everybody wants to oh. see. And uh, yeah, we're seeing, you know, we're seeing consumers continue to spend, which we're really excited about.